Have you ever been excited to make that one project that you've had in your mind forever? And then when you actually start working on it, it just turns out to be a total abysmal. You spend lots of hours and lots of money on this project, but it just didn't turn out at all the way you wanted. Even though you had made replicas and you did the math and everything, it just is, it's just, it's not it. That's what this project was. I wanted to make an 1867 hoop skirt. Okay, so <laughs> it's been a week since I started trying to make an 1867 hoop skirt, uh, which was inspired by this patent from 1867 but I basically I got finished with making the whole thing and it was horrible I didn't like the way it looked at all it wasn't strong it couldn't support anything and heaven knows couldn't even support fabric so that has led me to make a, an elliptical crinoline from truly Victorian so this is their pattern and it's a late 1865 eight, late 1860 maybe 80, 1867 pattern I'm thinking that maybe once I cut everything out I can figure out a way to make it look the way that I want it to. So I'm going to tape this all together and start cutting out all of the pieces. As I mentioned in my last video where I discussed the differences between early Victorian styles and the later Victorian styles and trends of sizes of hoop skirts, by 1867, we're kind of caught in a limbo. The largeness of the hoop skirts have actually become so large, in fact, that a lot of men write about their irritations about how large the hoop skirts are in a lot of press and a lot of articles. In my first trial of making a 1867 hoop skirt, the creator of the patent says, quote, The object of this invention is to provide a hoop skirt, which will overcome the objection heretofore experienced by ladies on entering and leaving carriages from the entanglement of their feet in skirts. So, obviously, ladies falling out of carriages and overall being a general nuisance to people by its size and how large and, frankly, how just invasive these hoops were, there became a trend where slimming down the figure but still having volume at the circumference of the skirt was still really popular. And that's what this hoop skirt is that we're working on today. This hoop skirt by Truly Victorian really is very traditional and something that you'd see in quite a few extant pieces. However, I still would really like to try to make this Louis Ferriamar hoop skirt from 1867, maybe another day. just returned back from Joann's because I went to the store and I was going to try to get more of this just adorable ribbon uh, to be like a little <laughs> accent color and I couldn't find any more. And I just thought that this would just be really cute because I really like having a white garment with some little pops of color. And they didn't have any more. I just bought two little uh, rolls of it and <sighs> so sad. So I'm gonna save these strips for hopefully another project that I can use them for, but I am just going to end up using this regular white tape. <sighs> sad day, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut out all of the um, vertical, uh, I guess, ribbons that I will need to hold up the bag. And the bag is completely finished and it looks very nice. And um, I think what I'm going to do once everything is cut out, I need to go back over here to the bag and mark out where those ribbons are going to go here. I've already made the part that attaches to the waist 
and this is like the back little section here. Everything's ready to go. I just needed to go get the ribbon and now that I have it, we can resume. Just enjoying a little pumpkin spice latte while sewing oh, all of these boning channels, which will be used for da -da -da -da, going onto the hoop. Gotta say, the instructions are just like a little bit confusing. <laughs> um, uh, it's probably my fault because I, uh, I haven't really spent time reading instructions in a while. This is just some loose weave twill tape and um, I'm just sewing them all together with their assigned lengths. So then I can just continue sewing everything together and pinning. And then once everything is all pinned up, I will then be able to um, finally stitch everything down. So I'll do that by hand, but it's looking pretty good so far. I'm actually pretty impressed. For now, we're going to just keep sewing and enjoying our pumpkin spice. So try on this hoop skirt. Um, and in comparison to my other one that I had made, this is very heavy. There's so many more rings and these half hoops here pushes the whole front of the skirt forward, which is not something that I want. So I am glad that I just decided, when I saw this on my mannequin, I just decided that I really would like these little panels here, which was not in the pattern, to go across my backside and fasten closed. Front bit just be pushed back. It also creates a little bit more volume in the back, but it also makes the front much more flat instead of being pushed forward. All in all, I, mean, I don't really like this pattern very much, but I think it's going to give me the shape that I want, but maybe in the future, I can um, salvage this and create a hoop that is more in line with what I'm wanting and um, something that I think would create a more accurate shape. But for now, this will work just fine. What I think I'm going to do, I'm going to take my um, eyelet puncher and put some eyelets on these two panels here. And instead of using hooks and eyes, I'm wanting to use eyelets because if I do ever one day want to be able to lend it out and it just be more of like an A-line, kind of more bell-shaped dress instead of the true elliptical with the nice sized back here, then I'd have that option. But I'm going to take this off and <laughs> put my dinner in the oven. <laughs> Well, obviously, I didn't read the directions all the way through because at the very last page, it says that I have to cut eight tie strings approximately 18 inches long. Yeah, totally calling myself out here for <laughs> not reading the directions, but you know, I was starting to get a little bit overwhelmed. You know, I actually like the idea of having panels there uh, that can be adjusted and also have an excuse to use my Bates eye letter and these handy dandy tandy leather eyelets. These eyelets are really neat because instead of it having a backing, it literally folds into its own backing, which is why it's 
a little bit longer than normal eyelets. All in all, this pattern really isn't too bad. I know I said that it's really not my favorite, mostly because it is very heavy in comparison to what I thought it would be, but as you can see, it does create a different kind of shape versus the traditional 1860s cupcake hoop. However, I think I would add just a little bit more volume to the back. And you know, it really does kind of look like a bell. And speaking of bells, click that bell button to get notified whenever I post. And also, if you felt like subscribing, that would be pretty cool. Therefore, while I had my brand new 1865-67 hoop skirt on, I decided to go ahead and try on my 18th century bum roll with it. And you know, it didn't turn out too bad. It definitely creates a little bit of a ridge, but it's honestly, it, it looks pretty good. So. Maybe I'll end up making a smaller version of this little bum roll to create a little bit more of the dramatic waist shape to the hoop, but this will work for now, and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Thanks so much, 